for a look at how this is hitting the industry. Brian Innes joins us in studio. He's the vice president of the Canadian Canola Council. Thank you very much for coming in to talk about this. So obviously bad news to hear yet a second company is being charged, um, uh, being banned, I should say, in China. So the prime minister is saying he's taking this seriously. What needs to happen to help the situation? Mm -hmm. Well, there's been a technical issue raised by the Chinese, and so the technical issue needs a technical solution. But unfortunately, we don't think that will happen without a high-level delegation traveling from Canada to China to get our plant health experts together in the same room and really get to the bottom of what's causing this problem. There's The charge is that there's some kind of a fungus, some kind of a pest involved in the crops. Mm -hmm. That's right. So all of a sudden, over the last few weeks, China's raised a lot of concerns around things like weed seeds and a disease called blackleg that we've been talking about with China for the last 10 years, in fact. We have an agreement uh, going back to 2016 negotiated by our prime minister and their premier to manage blackleg as one of the pests that they're raising. So this was a known pest globally. This, is, this was well known that this could be a problem or is a problem. That's right. We've been talking about it for 10 years. So it's a real surprise for us that China's now raising it as a concern because we haven't seen that our canola has changed in quality over the last few weeks. It's hard for us to understand how today our canola is different than it was just a few short weeks ago in December. And ultimately, how um, it's obviously significant, but how soon will the effects be felt of this ban, you know, not just economically for the companies, but for the, for the country? Our producers are already feeling it. They're feeling it in the price they're getting and they're feeling it in the uncertainty in the market. So for example, prices that producers are getting for all the canola they sell, regardless of whether it's going to China or not, have fallen. And what we're seeing is a real uncertainty in the industry that affects everybody. We have a quarter million Canadian jobs supported by canola across the country. And when producers are just a few short weeks away from going out to seed this year's crop, it's a lot of uncertainty that we really don't need. And that means that producers will have less, less resources to spend on things like accounting or other other things that support their operations from financing to buying equipment to seed their canola. Did this seemingly come out of the blue? I mean, I'm talking earlier of the month now when we were talking about the Richardson um, International and, and the ban there, but did that surprise the industry when they made that decision, when China made the decision? Well, I have to say that whenever Canada and China have discussions, whether they're good or bad, canola often comes up. We're the number one export from Canada to China overall. It was a Canadian invention, really. That's right. It's a real success story in Canada with canola being part of Canada, canola. So, you know, when it came up, it's not a surprise in the sense that canola often comes up. But what's a surprise to us is that all of a sudden, our canola is no longer what the Chinese want when we've been selling record amounts to China. Well, and you know, a lot of people just assume that this is a ratcheted up um, phase connected to Huawei, connected to Canada's detention of Meng Wanzhou. Do you think that? It's really hard for us to know. Uh, we're really perplexed at why we're having these troubles when we're not hearing of any concerns from our other international customers. And as I say, we've been sending record amounts of canola to China. In 2018, we sent record amounts of canola seed, canola oil and canola meal to China. So to suddenly have pests raised as a concern, some of which uh, we haven't even identified as growing in Canada, uh, it's been really perplexing to us. So has there been some kind of proof provided on behalf of China to either Canadian authorities or the Canadian Food Inspection Agency to say this is why we think it's tainted? Well, there have been discussions between plant health experts at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and, and China Customs, their equivalent. They seem to disagree on, on whether or not these things are even in our shipments and whether or not they're a concern to China. So we're still waiting on proof from the Chinese that they've been found in our shipments. They say that they have, and we'd like to really understand those details. But I think more importantly, what we need to do is get to a solution really quickly. And that's why a high-level delegation from Canada to China can really help our technical experts have the focus they need to get to a solution. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that, Brian, for coming in. Thank you.